What's up, folks? I'm back with another reaction, back with some more punk rock, and we're going back to some more propaganda. Um, this one is actually a request, shout out to Ryan. Uh, although I was sort of an idiot, he was like, oh, could you do a reaction to Potemkin City Limits? And I was like, oh, you know, I've done a few reactions to that album, um, but there's a couple other songs I haven't done. Let me know which one you'd want. And he was like, uh, I actually meant the song Potemkin City Limits on supporting cast. I was like, oh, right, my bad. Uh, so yeah, now in my defense, it's not a common thing when the name of one of the band's albums is actually the name of a song on a different album. So um, I got confused in the moment, but yes, there is a song on supporting cast called Potemkin City Limits. It makes me wonder if the lack of inclusion of this song on the album Potemkin City Limits relates to Fat Records and Propagandi's, you know, uh, business relationship dissolving. Um, you know, perhaps they had it ready to go, but then because of what happened, um, they wanted to include Rock for Sustainable Capitalism instead. I'm not sure. Um, but as I said, it is weird that Potemkin City Limits is on supporting cast and not Potemkin City Limits. Um, but yeah, lyrically, um, this song is a song, uh, or is, uh, it explores themes that Propagandi has um, explored in a number of songs. Um, the you know humane meat is still murder, and um, apparently I'm a PC fascist. The the flensing of Sandor Cates, Perina Hall of Fame. Um, these songs all get at the brutal ways in which humans use, exploit, um, and consume um, with very little compunction or concern for you know, a, not even humanity, just a basic sense of decency um, through factory farms, through slaughterhouses, through um, butchery, through sport hunting, and so on. Um, it's just humans in many different ways um, brutalize non-human animals, including many mammals um, that we know scientifically are capable of a wide range of emotional cognition, um, you know, make social bonds, <clears throat> have emotional connections to um, uh, to mating partners and so on. Um, so um, they raise their young. They you know they have um, child care and so on. So the way in which humans treat a lot of non-human animal species is brutal. But this is particularly true in relation to factory farming or um, what is sometimes called like animal agriculture. <clears throat> and this song gets at that issue and it actually speaks to a real life um, historical event, which is to say, my understanding is that in like the early 90s, maybe 1990 specifically. Um, there was a pig named Francis who escaped from a slaughterhouse because, you know, a worker kind of like looked away or opened a door or something and the pig was able to get out and it actually was free for five months, survived on its own for five months. Eventually it was captured um, and taken to a farm um, where it was supposed to, I think, live out its life, but eventually like it got hit by a car and then I think um, like a farmer saw it and shot it with some tranquilizer darts that actually like pierced its organs and it died. Um, and so this song is sort of like um, a narrative and you know emotional lament um, for the fact that this pig fought for its freedom, was able to get it, was out on its own living perhaps as you know um, the non-domesticated ancestors of um, modern pigs. Um, would have lived, but at the end of the day, like, it still, you know, couldn't get away from human society enough to live out its days peacefully and, you know, was hit by a car and shot and killed. Um, so yeah, it's sort of a tragic story, but it's interesting because the Sonics are like, you know, they're, they're upbeat, they're fast, um, and the, the song has a, like, powerful energy to it, so it doesn't feel like, you know, a really sad song. There are parts of, like, Perina Hall of Fame where it's like, you can just feel the weight of the emotion. This song, it, it's it's a little different, um, so it's an interesting contrast. Um, but yeah, if you know more of the full story, if I'm leaving out some important elements about Francis the Pig, do let me know. I remember when I read about that, someone pointed out that I guess Chris has a child named Francis, um, so I'm not sure, um, you know, if there's a direct relation there, but it makes you wonder. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. This is Propagandi Potemkin City Limits, not from the album Potemkin City Limits, I might add, but uh, yeah, from the 2009 album Supporting Cast. <laughs> I've got an important layer though. I'll wait till after. Shit! 
That song was definitely like heavier than I remembered. That middle section it was like really moving. Uh, but um, what I meant, or forgot to say at the beginning, is that I think an important layer of the lyrics that I failed to touch on is that the idea of Potemkin city limits or, um, or Potemkin cities, right? Like if you don't know uh, Catherine, the you know sort of um, queen of the Russian Empire, um, when you know the Russian Empire was expanding and trying to build infrastructure out in the hinterlands that they had sort of recently taken over and so on. Um, eventually she wanted to see the progress so they went down this river I forget what river it is and they were supposed to stop and show her like oh look we built a city here and look how successful it is and okay let's go a little bit down the river more and oh look we built another city here well the reality is they hadn't really built this infrastructure they hadn't really sort of done the work yet and so ultimately the people who were sort of you know making sure that she thought what was happening or what she wanted to happen was happening they were building these facade cities. They were literally just fronts of buildings, and they actually didn't have any substance. They weren't lived in by people. They, you know, there weren't active businesses there. Um, but from the river, they looked legit. And so the queen was like, "Okay, excellent, great, and let's keep moving on." And then they would dissemble that city, you know, move ahead of where the boat had gotten to, and then they, you know, construct another facade city. And oh, look, we built another city here. Look how much infrastructure we built. Um, and so the idea was that it was a facade, it's not real, like it's not, you know, what you're seeing is not what's actually happening. And I think the point here in this song is that, you know, the worst brutality, the like, you don't even want to look, it's so cruel and brutal and um, ruthless. Uh, the, the factory farming, the sort of slaughterhouses, 
they're not like in notable public spaces around a lot of other like entertainment businesses and so on, right? They put, sort of put these in the middle of like wooded areas and whatever because you don't want to look too close, you know? People, a lot of people just want to eat their hamburgers and eat their hot dogs and their, their bacon and not really think about like what that comes from or you know, what goes into that and the emotional um, and psychological suffering that these animals absolutely do go through. Um, not just pigs and cows, which again are mammals and share mammalian cognition um, and sort of um, social bonds and so on um, in different ways, different species, but again, the mammalian brain is an emotional brain. This is you know, very well established by science. Um, and also, you know, birds, you know, we, like, I think in many cases people who might not be, or might be inclined to avoid eating beef or um, pork, um, then see no problem eating fish or chicken or whatever, and again, the reality is, my understanding is that, um, you know, chicken factory farms are as brutal, if not more brutal, than a lot of these other factory farms and slaughterhouses, so, Again, the reality is um, I'm not perfect. Um, you know, I'm not a vegan. I try as much as I can to cut meat out of my diet. I don't eat beef, I don't eat pork, but I do occasionally eat poultry. And so I'm aware that I am on a level um, a hypocrite. And as much as you know, I try in my life to continue to like get better and be better at the end of the day, you know, it's, there are choices that you have to make and ultimately I'm not perfect. So um, yeah, this isn't meant to be like a preachy thing, but um, that is what the song is about. And it's a theme that Propagandi has been writing about or singing about for a long time, both I should say. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think of the song. Let me know what you think of the album. I absolutely love this album. I mentioned it before and I did react to the title tune, Supporting Cast, the song itself. One of my favorite songs from them all time, just because I'm a historian, and that song very much um, gets at the way history, or the past rather, is represented through history, which is to say, the past, things that happened, history, accounts about things that happened. Um, so yeah, let me know if there's another tune on this album that you'd like to react to. Uh, shout out to Ryan again for the request, and my bad for misreading it at first. Um, but yeah, if there's another tune on here you'd like to hear, let me know. Other than that, thank you for listening and watching. I'll see you next time.